Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 119-114 to loss to the San Antonio Spurs, Riker. We missed the first game, the first game reaction, but we're going to combine sort of the takeaways from both games in this podcast because I think there's a similar tone in both and there's definitely some positives to take away from these games, but the real impression that I sort of want to take away from this is this this picture of Terrence Ross on the screen. You can see uh, see him right there, you know. It's a it's a it's a tough look watching the Toronto Raptors so far this season right here. Ben, yeah. Well, first I want to say happy holidays to everyone. We yeah. a couple of exciting days. I hope that everyone had time to celebrate with family and stay safe and healthy, of course, but Ben opened up this same as Terrence Ross with my best laugh now cry later smile that kind of awkward smile when your mom's taking too many pictures on prom day and you just you're uncomfortable you're just smiling through the pain that's what this feels like ben dropping the first two games of the season to two non-playoff teams to the pelicans san antonio spurs well let's start with some positives ben the positives are that chris boucher trey boucher he darn near went out there and got himself a triple double with blocks i mean that rarely ever happens in the nba we also have Pascal Siakam almost had a triple-double. There will be plenty of time for Pascal Siakam bashing later in this podcast, I'm sure. Aaron <laughs> Baines looked pretty good. He looked pretty good for his limited stretch because obviously Chris Boucher eclipsed him this evening. And mm-hmm. our boy Fred Van Vliet, he's getting the bag, and he's he's kind of delivering already with 27 points this game. So there was positives, Ben. Yeah, there's a lot of positives, and we'll dive into Chris Boucher first. Chris Boucher with uh, 22 points. 10 rebounds, 7 blocks, as you mentioned. He was a guy that came out there and really, along with Fred Van Vliet, especially in that second half, kept us in it, brought the energy, brought the defense and these sorts of things. Honestly, you and I sort of brought up in the preseason that our biggest fear of this season was the center position, was after losing Serge Ibaka and Marcus Hull. Could we really rely on an Aaron Baines, a Chris Boucher, and obviously an Alex Len if those two guys go down? Could they really have an impact? And I think tonight... We and you know in the past couple of games we we see the issues are sort of forming in other places. Aaron Baines looks like a guy that can be a solid center to to play defense in the lane, take a few charges and hit the threes, finish around the rim. He actually actually looks like a better finisher around the rim than Marc Gasol was with the Toronto Raptors team. And Chris Boucher, obviously, why why Ben? Because he actually looked to take a shot. <laughs> it, they were some weird shots. He wasn't even looking at the basket at the, mm-hmm. his first two hook shots. They were just behind his head. But Marc Gasol would infamously grab offensive rebounds and then toss it back out to the three-point line. So it's a significant improvement from that standpoint that he's at least shooting it. Yeah, Aaron Baines has those Amir Johnson post hooks. where the, He's not even looking at the rim, as you mentioned. Just throws them up, you know, and they go in. They go in, so that's a positive with Baines. Obviously hit a couple threes, and we'll talk about one of them. That was a bit of a mess in the OGs, but Aaron Baines looked good, and obviously Chris Boucher, similar to last season, he has the nights where he looks absolutely phenomenal like he did tonight, getting blocks, mobile, finishing around the rim, and handling his own. And then some games, it's a a little bit more lackluster, but tonight was obviously a positive. But the bigs... They sort of, they calm me down a little bit, especially with the Spurs. They have LaMarcus Aldridge. Jack Aperto's a bigger guy. Not the scariest front court you'll ever go up against, but certainly not a small front court, Riker. Yeah, but a terribly athlete, unathletic yeah. front court. So it's not a really good example towards what the real tough competition would be in the East. So I don't want to put a lot of weight in this outside of saying all of our centers that played, played pretty well tonight. We, I don't think we need to take away from their, from their games. Yeah, no, a thousand percent. And... Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it with the positives to start because I know people in the comment section, they're going to be, as soon as they Itching. comment on the video, it's it's going to be a little bit of a mess. But uh, Fred Van Vliet certainly had a strong performance tonight. 27 points, 9 assists, 5 to 12 from the three-point line. Was really a guy that played that Kyle Lowry-esque role where we, he got us buckets when they were sort of needed, hit some threes and stuff, especially prior to the last four minutes of the game. We'll talk about that after, but... He was, he was a player that really stepped up, particularly in the second half, and did Fred Van Vliet things on the defensive end, mobile, sort of ran the team. Do you have anything else, anything that really stood out to you about Fred Van Vliet's performance tonight, Riker? Nothing in particular, Ben. I thought he was at least looking to be aggressive in a couple of around-the-paint finishes. Of course, he's going to have those same troubles all season long just with his height, but he was doing more Kyle Lowry-esque things. And I think when both of them are playing like, like this, it's it's pretty good. You look at the box score across our starters, 
every single player scored in double digits. You know, if you're just looking at this game on paper, you would have thought that the Raptors actually played a lot better than what they did. But I think it's now probably the natural time. We can't avoid the elephant in the room for too long, Ben, or the Raptor in the room. It's that some of these guys just did not play up to par tonight. OG Ananobi, I think he's getting too much sun. He's having too much fun down there in Tampa. You're saying he needs to shave the neck beard. I'm saying he needs to lose the twisties. He just has to go back to good classic OG, get his confidence, get his mojo back. Pascal Siakam, again, on paper, looks like he had a good mm. game. And really, if, from the eye test, he was bad, bad, bad tonight. The first, and the I know first that half, they... the first half, Siakam was all right. He missed a few threes and stuff, but the second half was a was a whole different story for Siakam. It was a whole different story. But what happened in the first quarter? He looked good because he was running the fast break. Mm. He was passing the ball. He didn't shoot a single three in the first, and then he opens the second quarter with four threes in a row. Yeah. Like, how is that your game? How, why are we paying this person $120 million to come out there and, and go away from what they had success in doing? I, I'm yeah, finding it really hard to rectify that, Ben. Yeah, and I think a big thing with Siakam, too, watching him play now these first couple games and comparing it to sort of the bubble and comparing it to sort of last season, because I had to look at previous games and sort of highlights from Siakam of last year. I think the biggest difference is that conditioning, the size of his body, he's come into this season certainly in better shape than the bubble, but as in the first quarter, we saw him running, as you mentioned, attacking the lane, driving and stuff. I think maybe maybe it's cardio, maybe it's mentality or something, but after he gets a few buckets inside, he's just settling for these outside shots that he, the same exact same thing happened in the bubble, but he didn't even go in at any point during the game, during the, the, the bubble. So at least the first <laughs> quarter, he was looking to attack and those sorts of things, but I think he just falls into this lull where he settles for jumpers, where he sort of plays extremely passive. His defense doesn't look, that was one area that looks just not like him at all because he came into the league as an energy guy, a player that's supposed to be a defensive first player getting rebounds. I remember his draft day comparison was Bismack Biombo and you know, he's not, there was a couple of possessions where he sort of switched out to guys around the perimeter and you know, bigger guys like Rudy Gay, who seems like he's probably 40, 45 years old right now. And he was just blowing by him as quick, like super quick. Siakam looked sort of lazy, not engaged. He's not running the floor anymore. I think a part of it might be conditioning. And he definitely looks in better condition than the bubble, but still not at the same level as, where, as to where he was last season. And after this video, you guys should check out highlights of him last year. And you can really see that sort of difference in his game because he, he just doesn't drive for long stretches and then after he tries to sort of put the team on his back and we need to get a bucket he just misses bunnies and that's what happened in the bubble and that's why we lost the boston celtics in the playoffs right here oh that's 100 percent why he has jalen brown guarding him for the majority of that series in deep post position and can't finish non-contested shots and i also don't like that he's posting up at the perimeter who why do you need to start your post up at the out at the three right use your quickness right use your speed use your first step to get around a guy and then you know we make memes and we make jokes about his his love for the spin move but i mean most of the time a spin move is relatively effective if you're doing it correctly with the right footwork and you have enough sort of speed behind yourself it's not a bad move to to use and he's just come away from it completely and i i just he, he seems to be just a fragment of what he once was but ben I think I also want to talk about Nick Nurse because I have issues with not seeing Malachi Richardson or Malachi Flynn. I'm going to say Richardson a ton this season. I know it. Malachi Flynn, not seeing Terrence Davis, um, Bembry, just some weird minutes, Matt Thomas. But I think a lot of that will maybe come out in the segments. Are you ready to swing it into that, Ben? Yeah, we'll we'll run through, I guess, the players. We talked about Baines a bit. Lowry. Lowry was fine, 16 points, 10 assists. You can't expect night in, night out 2016 level. Lowry is 34, 35 years old. I thought he at least brought energy tonight, which was a bigger thing than most of the players besides Boucher and these guys. So, uh, yeah, let's just swing into the segments. And tonight, the spicy P lay of the day, Riker. Do you have one in mind? Uh, a positive, start off with a positive segment. I was loving all of Chris Boucher's blocks this game, Ben. I he also on the flip side 
one of DeMar DeRozan's career best dunks, yeah. one of maybe the NBA's nastiest poster dunks in history was on poor unsuspecting Chris Boucher, who loves to try to get a hand on it. And tonight he was out there blocking DeMar DeRozan two, three, four times. It seemed like blocking a ton of guys, blocking everybody that he was tasked to defend or switch on to. So that gets my spicy P lay. Yeah, no, Chris Boucher, the way he played tonight was really, really deserving. All the block shots, all those sorts of things. Fred did have a nice couple threes too. Matt Thomas, and we didn't even mention Matt Thomas. I thought he had a stretch there where he looked nice. His defense was fine, made some cuts. I don't know why that guy doesn't take open layups though. He loves to take those floaters even when there's no one in front of him going to the basket. But it is what it is. But not all plays can be the spicy play of the day. And some just make you say, oh, geez, Riker. And... There was a bunch of OGs plays of the game tonight, and one of them for me was came at the beginning of this one. Aaron Baines had a really strong performance tonight, but we, you and I really have been suspect on some of the big shooting, and Aaron Baines has solid percentages. We got I got baited on some Alex Len stuff, and the start of this game, airball the airball the three pointer just, a, just right from the jump, and you knew that was sort of a symbolism for how this game would go, and. Yeah, that, that play made me say, oh, geez, but there's certainly a lot more that could be could be noted, right here? There is a lot more, but Ben, a lot of them are going into my DeMario Carroll Gold Star Award. So if we want to swing it along... Let's let's swing it straight into that we, DeMario we, Carroll Gold Star. We'll swing it straight in, Ben. This is reserved for bad plays, bad players. It's it's a, it's a the award that you don't want to get. It's a fan favorite. Yeah, we got to remind the only. We got to remind people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm reminding them right now, Ben, that it's... De I want at some point Damari Carroll will become distant memories. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that pa maybe Pascal Siakam is making his bid to become the title holder of this award, the award that players don't want to receive, but we're keeping it for now. Damari Carroll gold star award for worst performance. To me, it's going to a, a handful of players, Ben. I'm going to rattle them off. One, Nick nurse. He's not playing Malachi Flynn. What are you doing? We said that this guy has the potential to be a starter, maybe just from what we've seen in the preseason on any NBA team. And you're not giving him any minutes in a game that you're you're losing that you could use his services. I'm giving to Nick Nurse again, who's out there screaming his head two off at the end of the nurses. game. Two Nick Nurses. Two. He's getting it twice. <laughs> I'm throwing the animation for all of them you throw out there. <laughs> yeah, please do. I listen. It's not a championship game. It's the second regular season game of the season. If you're that intense, if you're that passionate about losing, put Don't together lose. a lineup that's going to win. <laughs> that's on you, Nick. That's on you, not the refs. That frustrated me. And then the third one I'm giving it to is, oh, I had one. It's Matt Thomas. The third one Matt, I'm giving it to is Matt, Matt Thomas. Matt Thomas. Yeah, because everybody knows it's Matt 99% Thomas. He's lost sure, that yeah. title. He's missed a lot of threes. He's missed a lot of threes now in the preseason and the regular season. I'm, I'm going to let him keep Matty Ice, but I'm hoping he doesn't devolve even further to Matthew Thomas because that is unplayable. <laughs> Matthew Thomas was certainly uh, uh, there on the court at uh, at stretches in this game, but he did have a hot streak. So I, I kind of gave a half to Mario Carroll Gold Star where I flashed it on the screen, but the one I'm surprised you didn't bring up, Riker, and I'm giving a full to Mario Carroll Gold Star award for this one, Norman Powell. And I've notoriously been a guy that's lived on Norm Island during those bad stretches when everyone sort of hates the guy and wants to trade him and all those sorts of stuff. And this might be the worst I've seen Norman Powell. He's had highs, he's had lows, but he's come into this season, whether it be the preseason, whether it be the first game against the Pelicans, this one, and he just does not look engaged. He does not look ready to go. He looks a little bit, so I don't know if it's out of shape, but just lethargic on the basketball court and we we gave the recommendations we wanted him to wear the t-shirt underneath the jersey we thought that's what it was with norman powell but he brought back the t-shirt under the jersey and scored zero points again tonight 0 for 5 missing layups you know i i don't know what we can recommend at this point for norman powell i don't know if he has any i didn't see any co commercials going for norm so no go daddy curse no osmos curses what what is it with norman powell this go around Riker? because it was probably the lowest i've seen norman powell play tonight you know it's bad five shots five misses all of them layups and you have matt devlin and leo routens making comments like because chris boucher got the offensive rebound on all five of them and when they're saying something like chris boucher he knows his teammates i.e he knows norman powell's gonna miss his layups around the rim 
you got it's not good it's not good ben and i'll let you talk about norm a little bit more if you want to but before i forget the final damari carol world star award i'm giving it to me i'm giving it to ya yeah boy Riker, who i'm i'm a notorious demar de rosen anti fan i don't want to call myself a hater i just think he's he's just not part of the modern nba and if he's going to come out there and hit three and what should have been four three pointers on the raptors shooting 58 percent, i wouldn't even mind having him back on the team and this is me adamantly saying to stay away from this guy i'm giving myself the gold star award for doubting on one of the raptors goats record i've been saying this to you all the time i was actually going to give you the damari kill gold star award so i i'm happy you graciously took it in stride but DeMar DeRozan looked pretty fire out there tonight. He's a free agent this offseason, you know. That might be he one He picked thing. up his player option. Yeah, this this coming offseason. He picked up his player oh. option for this year. So he's oh, gotcha. the big 2021 fish, right? <laughs> he actually is, isn't he? Who is no, that, him and Drummond? Him, Drummond, and Lowry. So him and Lowry are free agents. So maybe we could recruit DeMar back. Maybe Lowry and him will team up somewhere else. Hopefully not. I feel like our team would go to complete... Just be a complete mess without Kyle Lowry, especially how he looked tonight. But with Norman Powell playing this way, I guess we have a lot of shooting guards sort of coming off the bench now, hopefully in the in the wings, waiting for minutes. But we could sign DeMar DeRozan. That's obviously a Mimi skept. You know, we'll speculate on that in the future. But if Norman Powell, how much leash does Norman Powell get to play like this? Because obviously he's had lows before and he's bounced back obviously last year averaging like 27 or 17 points per game 16 17 points so he had a really strong year last year but i don't know how long nick nurse can really sacrifice games because i think if norman powell if we had a guy like terrence davis or malachi flynn giving their average production in this one we beat the spurs we beat these types of teams you know we'd get wins and if norman powell continues to have oh four nights I don't know if he's going to be in the rotation record because it's looking pretty bad to start off the season, even worse than it did the start of last season through stretches the season prior. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't have any big guards, though. That's the issue why Mm -hmm. I think he would have maybe more leash than what you're going to give him credit for right now. But we saw saw Norman Powell two seasons ago get benched for long stretches, and he was putting up six to ten points per game. And we said, you need to be 10 to 15, and you'll get play. And you'll, you'll get back into that bench rotation. So if he's expected to come off as the sixth man, the seventh man, and he's putting up zero points consistently, he's missing all of his layups, you might be right. He might find himself very quickly out of rotation, which is pretty wild to consider how hard he's worked to get himself back into a position where he can play. Yeah, no, 100%. And who would you like? Because interestingly enough, Matt Thomas was the first guy to come off the bench tonight. Yeah, as the six-man role for that guard rotation. I think Boucher was the, the official six-man, but in terms of those guard positions, Matt Thomas came off the bench before Norman Powell, so maybe those minutes are slowly being taken away. Obviously only played 18 minutes tonight. Norman Powell's used to those 25 to 30-minute range, so Nick Nurse might be slowly stripping the minutes away as we see it right now, and if he continues to play this sort of low level definitely something to look for in the future and who do you think those minutes should go to obviously we're both high on malachi flynn terrence davis is a guy we don't really know what's happening because he played the whole season last year above matt thomas and seemingly played at a a little bit of a higher level in the preseason so uh, maybe it's some off the court stuff and obviously that whole situation i don't think has been dealt with yet maybe the raptors have some info there but assuming taking that out of the equation who would you like to see in those backup minutes TD, Malachi Flynn, Matt Thomas, or maybe do you trust Norman Powell with those a bit more? Yeah, it's unfortunate that how important Terrence Davis would be to this team. I think they would fare fine maybe without him if things do go as speculated with that court case. But if things ultimately come in the free and clear and he's able to play this season with the Toronto Raptors, to me, he's the most valuable guy coming off the bench just because he can finish, he can slash. Right, Malachi Flynn, he's defensive player in the year in his division in college, but he's only 6'1", right? Matt Thomas, we, we he's not, you said it yourself, he's not willing to do any layups, right? It's yeah. all floaters as soon as he gets inside the three-point line uh, and, and floater bank shots at that. He doesn't like to flick it at the rim. So it's like of all of the guys, of all this depth or supposed depth, there's really only one or two that can – be a slasher and if norman powell is 0 for 5 in layups that only leaves one guy 
Yeah, we'll see. Well, I guess we'll see how Malachi is at finishing. There's been a really small sample size. The good thing about Malachi Flynn is the defense, as you mentioned, and the shooting looks really nice. I'm surprised we haven't given him any run at all, So, except for obviously the end of that Pelicans game. But we'll see how it goes. Are you overreacting to this right here? Because we're going a bit long. But do you think the Raptors should sort of hit tank mode and blow it up right now after the first two games? Because I'm still confident we can turn it around, but... We definitely need to be turning this ship around a little bit to start off this season. We need to do something, Ben. I'm frustrated with Masai for not re-signing Ibaka. I need to say that. I need to get it out there in the open. But tanking is tough when you've just in the last two seasons signed three of the guys who are supposed to be your core, right? That's not a very good vote of confidence. And the fans in you know saying that this was three good signings if immediately you now need to turn into a tanking situation so i think that's a big overreaction then uh, i think the raptors will be probably sixth in the east that would be my prediction but it's it's gonna be tough to get out of the first round with the way they've been playing i'm sticking with two we're bouncing back i'm not overreacting at the start of the year but i'm a little bit sad you probably heard in the tone of this podcast so you guys are the best to make this far check out the twitter the instagram all the cool stuff check out the website a lot of cool articles there. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up in the new year. So stay tuned to the Raptors Digest channel. Stay tuned for the Raptors. Jump on the bandwagon now. Tell all your friends because it's low. People are jumping off. You know, there's space being put in for Raptors fans to join on. And then when we win the championship, it'll taste that much sweeter after the slow start to the year. But you guys are the best. Any last words right here? Trey Boucher. He had himself a game. Cheers. Trey Boucher. <laughs>